Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm going to go through the three books that I've read for the Palestinian Specfic Challenge so far. This is about half of my mini challenge, which is to read one novel by each novelist on my reading list, which I'll have in the description. Um, I'm going to go through these in terms of like the star rating that I gave them. And we'll start with the three star rating which I gave to Thunderbird book one by Sonia Nemir. So I enjoyed this book. Um, it was for a young adult, not a young adult, um, it was for like a junior fiction uh, audience. And I haven't read a lot of junior fiction, so I think there was a little bit of a mismatch there in terms of readership. Uh, it says, the Thunderbird Trilogy, a fast-paced, time-traveling fantasy adventure centered on Noor, a young orphaned Palestinian girl who stars in, starts in the present and must go back in time to get four magical bird feathers and save the world. Aided by a jinn cat and girls who look identical to Noor and who each have one of the bird's powers, in this initial volume, Noor begins her journey through different historical periods, striving to keep the wall between worlds intact. Um, so I'm very familiar with Sonia Nimir's writing style and her, her work from previous books that I've read of hers. It's very evocative. Um, it is very fast paced and the um, well, you'll see, I'll read, read a short excerpt. So Noor has this peculiar quality that fires start when she gets upset or emotionally, she has heightened emotions. And so this is the first time that she tries on purpose to control her power or, or what is happening. Noor means light in Arabic. She got up and walked around the garden, bewildered. Then she sat down in front of the pile and gave it a hard look. She closed her eyes and emptied her mind of all thoughts. She focused all her mental energy on one image, the grass on fire. She kept her eyes shut and focused on that single solitary image. Then she smelled the scent of burning. She quickly opened her eyes to see the grass aflame and she stood and jumped in the air laughing. After a moment, she looked back at the pile of grass, which had turned to ash. Aha, it's burning. It's really burning, she shouted, turning in circles. It's burning. I'm the greatest witch in the world. I can make things catch fire by the will of the great witch, the great witch of Ramallah, the first witch of Palestine. She repeated the experiment. This time, the pile of grass didn't take nearly as long to catch fire. She stood and raised her hand as though she were wielding a sword and she and said with a dramatic gesture, where are you, my enemies? Come on and face me. I'm right here, you cowards. So I found this book very emotionally charged. There's very dramatic scenes that happen in it. The chapters are quite short and they usually end on some big crescendo. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because it is quite a short book. Um, if I had one criticism, it would be that there's um, a lot of predictability for, for, at least for this reader, in terms of the plot. And um, you can kind of anticipate what's going to happen very easily. But I don't think that that would be the case for the target audience of this book. So the three stars is for me as an adult reader, reading something that's for a much younger audience. So that's Thunderbird by Sonia Nimir. Then we have a book I gave four stars to. This is Guardian of the Gold Breathers by Elise Stevens. 12 year old Liam Finley doesn't expect anything good when he is forced to move from Dublin to his stepfather's large country house on the edge of the wild woods. 
But after the first night there, Liam abandoned his fears of dreary boredom when he discovers that fairy tales haunt his new home. Has he truly discovered a dragon egg? The house's old blind gardener, Michael Moran, claims to know Liam's secret destiny, which lies in an enchanted other world. He says Liam is the next guardian of the gold breathers, a champion of dragons. Time is not on Liam's side. Can he complete his three tasks to prove himself as guardian before the paths close between his world and the guardian's land? Liam wants to believe the mysterious tales of Michael, but should he instead seek shelter in the practical kindness of Hannah, the housekeeper who calls Michael's stories rubbish? Liam's heart tells him to trust the things of magic, but it's the humans he can't be sure about. And then there are some content warnings here. The themes in this story include losing a parent, family relationships, dealing with guilt, overcoming challenges, facing your fears, and standing up for what is right even when it costs you something. Now, the author, Elise Stevens, um, I've seen her uh, compared with C.S. Lewis and other writers of the fantasy genre, and I definitely could feel the C.S. Lewis influence in this book. The It had a lot of vibes that reminded me of Lion and Witch in the Wardrobe. I, what I found when I went back to this book to find an excerpt to read from is that they, it was such a smooth and steady through line that there really wasn't any scene that jumped out to me as being exceptional or that I, that really stuck with me. Um, I'll read you chapter one, which is very short. Just so you can get a sense of the prose style. Okay. Chapter one. Are you quite certain the lad could not have escaped? Perhaps he hid himself. We've combed the forest twice over and discovered no sign of him. The young fireman paused and added in, then added in a whisper, and bones don't melt or fly away. The house's head of staff, a male gardener and a female housekeeper, did not answer his question as if they couldn't hear it. The fireman looked, at his, looked to his chief for help in bearing his, this bad news. The chief was wringing his kerchief between soot-stained fingers, looking down at his shoes. The firemen turned and watched the returning search party. Their boots stirred embers in rippling webs of orange and yellow. Are you sure the lad couldn't have outrun it? The young fireman again addressed the couple. The man, who was grizzled and large-shouldered, held the woman with one arm as if she might fall over without it. A singed dressing gown hung on the man's shoulders, and he wore a haggard face with a fierce, unreadable scowl. He gripped the garden hoe in his free hand, wielding it as if it were a battle spear. When still none answered him, the fireman suggested, Is there a chance he might have escaped it? The fire chief raised his head at last to glare at the fireman. The housekeeper roused herself. Not a whole, not a soul heard screams. Her voice grated in the dreadful whisper. A child burnt to death would surely have made a, she hid her face. The gardener leaned on his hoe and seemed to gaze at the firemen with white sightless eyes. Several members of the crew shifted with discomfort. The young fireman dropped his gaze to the ashy grass under his boots. He'd not try again to offer hope for the impossible. The disappearance might have been mysterious, but it was almost surely a tragedy. He held his tongue and wished he knew how to write a better ending to this story. That was my four-star read. Now, this is my five-star read of the challenge so far. This is The Secret Life of Saeed the Pessoptimist by Emil Habibi. And... Um, this book, um, I had the opposite experience to The Guardian of the Gold Breathers. It was very hard to find a favorite section, a favorite scene. Um, 
Now, the section I am going to read is not, it's more of the tragic comedy uh, that's typical of the book, not so much the speculative element, which the speculative element is very apparent in this book. It's, um, there's a lot of fabulism in it. I, I'm, I'm using the term fabulism in this sense of it's adjacent to magical realism. This is definitely a very political use of fantasy and a critique of colonialism. Um, so it's not that um, like some, some uses of the term fabulism mean basically fantasy that is literary. Um, and there's sort of a, um, a value judgment placed on it that it's somehow better or fancier than normal fantasy. This is definitely not the case. This is a work which is steeped in this expansion of realism to incorporate things which are um, supernatural as though they were commonplace. And those those expansions comment on the absurdity of the life of Palestinian citizens of Israel. Mm -hmm. So from the back cover, it says, combining fact and fantasy, tragedy and comedy, Halibi's story of a Palestinian who becomes a citizen of Israel is a contemporary classic. Said is the comic hero, the luckless fool, whose tale of aggression and resistance, terror and heroism, reason and loyalty typifies the hardships and struggles of Palestinians in Israel. An informer for the Zionist state, his stupidity, candor and cowardice make him more of a victim than a villain. But in a series of tragic comic episodes, he is gradually transformed from a disaster prone, gullible collaborator into a Palestinian. No hero still, but a simple man intent on survival and happiness. The author brings both his anger and sorrow at Palestine's tragedy and his first hand knowledge of the absurdities of Israeli politics to a delightfully satirical and unconventional novel. So well, this part of the story that I'm going to read, this is um, after Said has been married to this woman whose name means to remain. And the Israeli authorities have like orchestrated their marriage so that he will prevent the influence of communists in a particular village of Palestinians that have been isolated from the the growing uh, power of the Israeli state around them. And so they're trying to sort of clamp down on any kind of resistance that might spring up there. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's having this conversation with his wife and Said has been undermining the communists to have a reunion with his first wife that they have kind of dangled in front of him as a as a treat that if he's a good boy as they say that they'll re reunite him with his first wife whose name is return or once again so there are, there's a very blatant symbolism that comes through and they even comment on that at times like um the Israelis say how suspicious it is that his first love is return and his wife is remain, um, which comments on like the Palestinians wanting to return to their homeland or they want to remain like Sadi Said remains there. So this is a scene where he's talking with his wife about the communists. And she she looks at him with, with wide eyes and says, who are the communists? Ungrateful people who deny the blessings. What blessings? The blessings of life which victors bestow upon the conquered. But each, but such blessings come from God. Well, 
they deny God. They're heretics. How are they heretics? They claim, God preserve us from them, that they can change predetermined fate. This explanation made her even more eager and persistent. However could they be that powerful, she demanded. Perhaps they found, as we did, chests their fathers had left for them, hidden among the beaches of their own tanturas. Now, this was a chest that... Um, her father had left off the coast of their village, which was depopulated in 1948. So that's what the Tentura reference is. Um, this answer inflamed her imagination all the more. Her eyes gleamed and she knit her brows in determination and insisted, then we must seek help from the communists. So Saeed is in this pickle now because he's his whole job is to undermine the communists and he's accidentally made a communist sympathizer out of his wife. So just by trying to tell her how bad they are <laughs> for the Israeli government. Um, so that was one example of the, the kind of tragic comedy in, in this piece. It's just, there are so many of these wonderful moments that were very telling, very, um, poignant, um, that have a lot to make you think, but were also just ridiculous. So this was my five-star read of the challenge so far. So we have Saeed the Pissoptimist, five stars. Everyone should read this. This is amazing. Um, Guardian of the Gold Breathers. This would be good for a young audience, uh, YA people who like C.S. Lewis. And Thunderbird, this would be good for a, a young, um, a junior fiction audience, I think. And this is going to be a trilogy. Back. So my next reads for the challenge, which I'll do a, a separate video on uh, when I re read these ones, is Tower of Dreams by Jamil Nasser, who is, I think... This book has the most accolades out of all the, the books that I've encountered so far um, in my uh, cu curating of the Palestinian speculative fiction reading list. Um, this was uh, won an award for um, uh, a French prize, I forget the name, um, but it was also nominated for, um, I believe, a Locus and a Hugo. Um, it's on the reading list, but it was nominated for at least three prizes, I believe, and won uh, the, Fr the French prize. And um, this is basically about a man, an American, whose job is to mine dreams in foreign countries and sell the images back to marketing companies. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to reading that. That sounds interesting. Um, and then there's The Book of Disappearance by Ibtisam Azim. And this one is the most like, say, the Pissoptimist. Its um, speculative element is that one day all of the Palestinians in Israel disappear without any warning and without a trace. And so these this story is the narrative of the people that are left behind and they find journals from Palestinians that have disappeared and so on. And so it's a bit of a mystery as well, but it's interrogating like the, the um, positions of, for example, one of the characters is a, a liberal Zionist um, in, who is finding the journals of his Palestinian neighbor and then like his response to this. And then lastly, this is what I'm gonna cap off the challenge with is Nadia Afifi's The Sentient, which is a book about human cloning. And I think it's the most straightforward science fiction piece that I have um, that I can recommend from the list so far. Um, I haven't read it yet, so I can't give it a general recommendation, but it's actually part of a trilogy. I thought it was a duology, but there's three books planned for this. Um, I have two of them. So I thought I'll finish up my mini challenge with this and then I can keep reading 
um, cause I have her second book in the series, The Emergent. So that's all for now. Um, I hope to have more reading vlogs to show you later. And I have a tag that I have to do soon. So take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.